Uh, I just have more than a question. This is a, a comment because I noticed that you refer to Wikipedia for for um, definitions and stuff. Um, and so I'm just surprised because I always hear from some other professors, um, don't go to Wikipedia, don't Google things, um, you know, uh, you should search for other sources. So I'm just, I'm just, um, yeah. So, so you trust, um, it's, it's a good source for you. It, it is a very salient comment. And uh, I guess it, this is a topic that to cover the more thorough in a, a LIS, Library Information Science class. It has to do with what you call reliability of source or reliability of information source. And so the question of what is a reliable source, um, that's a very important question. And, um, and I guess um, it's something where you learn with experience what, um, what kind of sources you can rely on. I remember when I was in high school and uh, I think, uh, I think it was a, a either government class or must I think it was a because it's like a civics a government class so I was probably twelfth grade or eleventh grade then and um, they had us uh, like a judge what sources are reliable what sources are not and you know like radio talk show host wasn't supposed to be reliable because they could have they probably have their own agenda and they, their uh, coverage would be biased and. Um, I think there's a kind of a source that traditionally considered reliable, which is um, encyclopedia. And encyclopedia is a very particular kind of a source. And, um, you know, we are <laughs> in the digital, like a Brit Encyclopedia Britannica, it's a very old um publication. It, uh, they've been around forever. And I think sometime when I was in high school, there was also Encarta, uh, encyclopedia made by Microsoft. And encyclopedia is traditionally considered um, reliable to the degree that um, it's uh, checked by some people. It they um, Encyclopedia Britannica they have some reputation to uphold and um, there's some process that um, tries to ensure the accuracy of information and when, I remember when Wikipedia was the first to getting started like 20 years ago that um, that was the most uh, uh, most uh, relevant um, argument against using Wikipedia, which is that um, that it's, it's editable by anyone, that um, because it's editable by anyone, how could, how could you trust that, uh, how could you trust the information that, uh, that's on there that anyone with no credential at all could have put in there? So, and I would say, you know, at the very starting stages of Wikipedia, that was definitely true. That um, there, uh, I remember uh, correcting some things in Wikipedia myself when I was a GSI at Cal. Um, you know, I was teaching a circuit class and some students were submit, a number of students were submitting wrong answers about a particular filter. And also GSIs were talking about it, and we figured out where the students are getting that information from, from one of the articles in Wikipedia about filters, uh, electronic filters. And, um, and so we corrected it so that uh, when students look it up and find that article, they would have correct information. And over the decades of its existence, uh, that kind of a process uh, has happened. I know it happens from being part of small part of them myself, and it happens. Um, it so after having existed for twenty years, after having a whole community of people who are um, curating the material there, I would say certain sections of Wikipedia are reliable. Um, certain sections in science and technology, in particular. 
And this is actually something that's uh, somewhat unique about science in that um, science might be the uh, one distinguishing feature of science is that over time a consensus forms. And um, you've seen it in this class um, or seen it presented in this class in terms of geocentric model and heliocentric model. Now, I'm not saying that consensus means that it's the truth, um, but the, the scientific um, opinion, it usually there's a, a particular paradigm, particular way of thinking that becomes dominant. And that doesn't always happen in all fields, uh, especially in the social sciences and humanities, history, literature, you will always find the different schools of thought. You, you will always have, and sometimes these different schools of thought, they go to deep core issues within the discipline. So um, there being a large body of knowledge that pretty much everyone agrees on, that is uh, quite unique to the fields that uh, we categorize under science. So within the uh, fields of science and technology, the articles in Wikipedia, um, they tend to be fairly reliable because one, uh, there is a um, kind of consensus that the article can refer to. So, um, so, <laughs> so um, it's a matter of the ability of this. Uh, and the, whenever you have an encyclopedia, the, um, particular weakness of uh, encyclopedia, the, uh, applies to Encyclopedia Britannica, as well as Wikipedia, is that it's a secondary source. Um, so Wikipedia actually has a policy saying no original research. It's because a wiki artic, uh, the encyclopedia is not a proper forum for presenting original research. It's the proper forum for collecting um, the facts and um, theories that have already been vetted through other sources. Um, so, so I think especially in um, classes that are focused on literature research, I can imagine some professors having a policy against, let's say, citations to Encyclopedia. And the reason for that would be even if you are using Encyclopedia Britannica, uh, proper encyclopedias will always have references. So for example, uh, I don't know, uh, ooh, <laughs> let's say you are doing research on Chancellor of Germany, who is retiring by the way, um, then all proper encyclopedia articles will have a list of references. The list of references could be at the end, or could it be towards the beginning? Why doesn't this have, oh, I guess maybe it's under additional info. What, but why is it under uh, Bundestag? Uh, I, oh, yeah, additional info. So when you look under additional info, it has a uh, link to, well, article history, I don't care about that. Well, has to maybe that's not the. <laughs> let me look up. Well, let me look up Big Bang nucleosynthesis. Uh, and if you have, uh, uh, okay, they don't have. This is why Wikipedia is uh, better because it's more uh, comprehensive. Um, so within here. If I go to additional info, yeah, it should have uh, references. Now, so here there are references that are internal to the encyclopedia, but um, hmm, we might have come to the place where Wikipedia is, is actually better than Encyclopedia Britannica here. Okay, so <laughs> this is not turning out to be a good example. So let me do this search within uh, Wikipedia. So I'm pretty sure for the Wikipedia article, there's an um, there's something that I can use to demonstrate what I'm talking about, which is so you know this is a long article and it's a um, the key thing I'm trying to say here is that it's a secondary source, and um, with these secondary sources, the thing that's important is that they are not authorities within themselves. 
that's why um, each of these citations of facts, they have reference um, that's uh, all collected at the end. There's a whole um, yeah, reference section. So each of the uh, facts that's not generally known thing, they are referred to these things. So when you are doing like a literature research and um, and you find this um, useful thing within Wikipedia, oops, I shouldn't have clicked on that, uh, within Wikipedia, then the proper thing to do is not to cite the Wikipedia itself because it, it, it's a, uh, be because it's a secondary source. It's not a source that is itself authoritative. So let's say um, the research that you're doing and uh, so expansion of space and let's say um, this thing about the FRW or FLRW metric, that's uh, the thing that you needed. Then what you do need to do is you do have to go to the original source. So um, this is where Wikipedia is structured better than Encyclopedia Britannica is in. By their community policy, uh, statements like this need to be cited. So there's a citation there. So when I go to the citation, now, you know, actually finding this book within a, oh, wait. Oh, all right. So that's a textbook. And uh, you might eventually need to locate this in a library or... Uh, yeah, limited preview. So if there are particular, let me see if I can actually find that page so, or chapter 23. Uh, so yeah, okay, I can actually read the chapter 23. So, you know, now um, to actually see how the paragraph here matches up with uh, what's in the textbook, you would have to check that out in a library and do that. So that's the kind of uh, literature, proper literature research you would need to do. Um, so, but that's the weakness of any encyclopedia that it's a secondary source. It should not be itself used as a citation. Uh, now, because this class isn't really focused on literature research, that's why I'm okay with you citing a secondary source, that is Wikipedia, which is a type of encyclopedia. So, so I said that um, this is not a proper forum for people to present original research. That's why Wikipedia actually has a policy against original research. Uh, if people, oops, uh, yeah, Wikipedia no original research. So that's a that's one of their policies uh, when people are posting stuff and that's based on their own experiment or whatever, then this is not the forum to post it in. The forum to post it in are peer reviewed journals. Uh, that's where that's the system where community has been set up, a community of experts in that field. Uh, that's what peer reviewed means. That's what who the peers are, peers in that particular area. And, and even though that the process of peer review is, um, is the process that's set up to, uh, for people to be able to vet uh, whether this uh, original research is something that makes sense or not, even that has its uh, weaknesses. Um, so uh, let me see if I can search. Uh, Peer review and uh, science uh, scientific fraud, and uh, there might be a yeah yeah. So um, I think this is a probably a good that not never having read it. I think this is probably about right. Nature is one of the reputable um, uh, publishers uh, that publish many different uh, peer reviewed uh, journal articles. They do uh, they do publication in. Uh, the physical science, like physics, and they also do publication in um, in other fields. And so this is, I guess, from Nature Neuroscience. And they ask this question, can peer review police fraud? And without having read this particular editorial, I hope they will say no, that they can't. And let me see if I can actually find the paragraph that says what I hope will say. Um, so science is a communal enterprise built on trust. Referees and editors generally take data at face value. 
this is something that they apparently do in neuroscience and we do in physics because it it is simply not feasible for the the reviewers to repeat the exact the same experiment and do that uh, repeatability of experiments are important thing and it gets done all the time but that repeating experiment it doesn't get done at the peer review process so that's why it's a saying that the system is not set up to work any other way. If the editors and referees distrust, distrusted all authors and assumed that every result was potentially fake, few papers would be published. So even when a journal article is published in a peer reviewed uh, journal, that doesn't guarantee that it's uh, correct because especially if the author intended to commit scientific fraud the system isn't set up to prevent that. Uh, what prevents it eventually is that, you know, scientific career, it's a lifelong career and um, uh, publishing fraudulent data, that's the way to get kicked out of the community and not be able to publish anything ever. So, um, so that's what really uh, prevents scientific fraud in the long term, but in the short term, it does happen. That's why the whole topic of reliability of source is uh, it's something that takes an entire course to cover properly. And in the end, it really does become a judgmental call. Um, and depending on what topics it is, you're, like you know, if you're addressing very sensitive political topics or religious topics, then... <laughs> um, uh, so if my class was covering contemporary political and religious or societal issues, I would not be sending you uh, Wikipedia's way. And, and Wikipedia uh, as a website does lockdown articles all the time because their articles get vandalized by people who just want to insert false facts into uh, articles where they are hoping a lot of people will see. Um, science and technology, we are lucky to be not in that epicenter. That's one of the reasons I'm okay with the Wikipedia. Um, but the whole reliability of source question is, uh, it, uh, it's not something where uh, someone can give you a quick rule of thumb and just to have you rely on that rule of thumb forever. So I guess the rule of thumb that you shouldn't rely on Wikipedia, it's a rule that might have been good enough uh, at some point, like when you're going through high school or when you are working through some of the introductory classes. But that rule of thumb is something that, um, well, you know, it, it needs to be modified from time to time. And one modification I would suggest is that when it comes to uh, science and technology around the established con consensus of science and technology, uh, Wikipedia is reliable because it's simply not controversial enough for there to be people who want to insert wrong things just for the kick of it. Um, so, so yeah, uh, I, I do recognize that uh, I refer to Wikipedia a lot. <laughs> and, you know, whenever I link to it, because there's always possibility that there's something that's wrong, I do kind of check it myself. That's uh, the same thing I would do with any other videos I link from my course, because there are a lot of video resources on YouTube that's good. And there's also a lot that I found disappointing. And I review those and make sure I don't link you to things that I found disappointing. So I hope that <laughs> to the extent I can fully address. Yes. This, but, <laughs> yes. Thank you, yeah. Professor. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, I, I would just uh, uh, ask you to keep this in the somewhere in the corner of your mind, kind of forever, because um, <laughs> it, you know, sometimes people have a reason to want to trick you and convince you to believe in things that are not true and then, you know, you have to be your own detective and make sure that you don't trust the things that are not reliable. Oh. 